we can also find an instantaneous rate of change from some given data. And this is often the case in the real world. We might not have an equation or, or a graph drawn, but we have some data that's been collected, some actual measurements, some measurements of positions at various times, or some other measurements. And we're told to find an instantaneous rate of change based on the data. In this particular case, we're told that this helicopter is being tested. And during the test, this data was collected, the altitude of the helicopter in meters at various times and seconds. So you can see it at time zero, it had an altitude of zero. And then as time went on, the altitude increased up to, a little, looks like a maximum here at around six seconds. And then the altitude, the numbers there start going lower back down to zero. Now we don't have a graph, but we're going to plot these points just to get a visual picture of what's going on. So on this graph, I'm going to plot these values. At time zero, it was at an altitude of zero. And at one, it was at 4.5. And you can put these on your graph on your page. At two, it was at 18. So we plot that point. At three, it was 36.5. That's about there. And at four seconds, it was at 53 about there. At 5 seconds it was at 63. At 6 seconds it was at 66. So just above the halfway point between 60 and 70. At 7 seconds it was at 59.5. At 8 seconds it was at 48. At 9 seconds it was at 36.5. At 10 seconds it was at 26.5. At 11 seconds it was at 19 there, so just under the 20 mark. At 12 seconds, it was 12 and a half. And at 13 seconds, it was at 7.5. At 14 seconds, it was at 3.5, so about there. And 15 seconds at zero. You could connect those dots with a smooth curve, but you don't have to. These data points represent what we know, the information we were given. And just plotting those points helps you visually see the motion. You can see that it was uh, accelerating a bit here as the, the slope gets steeper. That it went up fairly quickly. It only took six seconds to reach the peak. And then you can see that it came down a little more slowly. It took uh, from six all the way to 15 seconds to come down. So it made a rather soft landing. The slope here isn't very steep at the end, so it's landing uh, a soft landing, which is typically what you would want. You wouldn't want it to crash into the ground. All that information is easily apprehended visually from the graph. So that's what, just one of the reasons for graphing this, is you can get a good, good, uh, good visual picture of what's going on pretty easily from the graph. Now we're told to find the rate of change of the altitude at two seconds. So if we were doing a graph, that would be a tangent line to the graph at this point. But we don't have we don't have a graph. We have this picture that we just plotted, but this isn't what we were given. What we were given is the data. And we're concerned with this data point right here. At two seconds, the altitude was 18 meters. But at that time, that's what we're told. Find the rate of change of the altitude at t equals two seconds. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to go to the left of the two second mark and to the right of the two second mark and we're going to get those two points and we're going to calculate the slope of that segment and that's about the best we can do we don't have any other data besides the points shown here and going to the left one and to the right one from the given point that's going to be the best best we can do given just the data so let's look at that data again uh, if we go to the right from two seconds, that puts us at three seconds with an altitude of 36.5. And to the left puts us at a time of one second with an altitude of 4.5. So on the page here, when, it, when we're told find the rate of change of altitude at two seconds, let's do that. Our delta x over our delta t. And we're, using, we're going uh, from one to three seconds. So it's going to be 36.5 minus... 4.5. That's our change in x over that time interval of two seconds. And we do that calculation. That comes out to 32 meters over two seconds, or 16 meters per second. That is the slope of that line segment right there. And that would be a good estimate for the rate of change at that moment in time, the rate of change of position, changing at 16 meters per second. 
We're also told to find the rate of change of the altitude at seven seconds. So that's this point right here. So we're going to take a point to the left and a point to the right and calculate the slope there. So I'll draw this in. But again, we're actually getting the calculation from the numbers that we were given, not from the particular graph here. So let's look at the numbers. We're, we're looking at the six second and the eight second mark. And using those numbers will give us a good approximation for the slope at seven seconds. So at six seconds, the altitude is 66 meters. And at eight seconds, the altitude is 48. So when we calculate our delta x over delta t, it will be 48 minus 66 divided by the two second interval. And that comes out to negative 18 meters divided by two seconds, or negative nine meters per second. And that's the slope of this segment. And you can see it's negative. And so based on the data that we're given, that's a good approximation, or the best we can get based on that data, for the instantaneous rate of change of the altitude, or the derivative of the altitude, at that moment in time.